What's up guys and welcome back to another tutorial by your favorite person on the internet, me. Today we're going to be learning about how to build a password generator app and it should be super simple. Whether you're a pro or a beginner, I think this app will be great for testing out your skills. Also this app is just useful overall, so without further ado, let's hop right into the video. Alright guys, here we are, we're in Visual Studio. Let's go ahead and just start our project. So we want to make a Windows Form app with the .NET Framework and we're going to call this one Password Generator. So go ahead and click create. All right, here we are and we have our project open. So go ahead and bump the size up on this just a little bit. And we're gonna change some basic settings just to make it nicer. So change the text field or click on your form and change the text field so we can name our app. And we're gonna say uh, password generator is the name of the app. And then we're gonna scroll up to where it says form border style. We're gonna change it from sizable to fixed single. And that's going to allow it to stay the same size that we see it on the screen and the user will not be able to resize it as they please. Now let's pick a nice background for the app. I kind of like the theme of this light, lighter red color so let's go ahead and roll with that. And now that we have that basic stuff out of the way, um, let's go ahead and put some basic elements on here that we're going to need. A button to copy the current password that's displayed to, to your clipboard. And then I also want to have a slider that we can adjust the length of the password. Okay, so in order to do that, let's go ahead and drag some basic stuff on the screen. So we're gonna need a label and let's just adjust some of the basic settings here. So at the very top of the screen, um, this is going to be the label that displays our password. So instead of label one, we're gonna say it is the password label. And then we want to scroll down here and set auto size to false. That way we can adjust it to as big of a size as we want. So kind of just drag it, I don't know, as large as you want and center it in the screen. Then we're gonna change the font and we're gonna change it from Microsoft Sans and you can do whatever font you'd like. I personally like this, um, I'm not gonna try to pronounce this, but I like this font and I like the bold and I want to make it like a really big font, like size 24 would be nice. And another thing I wanna do is go ahead and change the text line property and we're going to just select this one right here, the middle of the middle. So now we are done with our label. We're going to leave it as label one for the text because we're going to generate a password right when they load up the app. Um, so they will never actually see the label one text. Okay, now that we have that label out of the way, let's copy and paste another one and then drag this one down a little bit further. And instead of saying label one, we're going to change the text on this one to say password length colon and the space. And then we're going to just have a default value of five. So this is what's going to tell the user how long the password slider is. It, you know, we're, we're going to make a change based on what the user is doing. So we're going to just have a default value of five. We need two more things. One of them is going to be called a track bar. And a track bar is just a slidable um, little thing that you could select the values low and high. And they could, the user could slide it along there to decide what value they want to choose. So go ahead and click that drag bar and drag it onto the screen. And we're going to make it just as wide as the label is. So go ahead and just kind of make it like roughly the same width of the label. So now that we have it like that, uh, I just want to make it, make the password length a little bit shorter. That way it matches the label. So let's go ahead and click on this track bar here and adjust some basic properties. So once we have it clicked, we're going to scroll to the top and change the name from track bar one to password length slider and honestly that is all we need to do we just need to rename it so now that we have that let's add our button to the screen so drag a button on here and then size it to the width of the slider and the, the upper label and then we're going to match this uh, similar to the other stuff on the screen so instead of uh, button one we're going to rename it to copy copy password button and then we're going to scroll down, change the font on it from this to match the other one. So we're going to do this bold and size 16. And then instead of the text being button one, we're going to say copy password. And then we're going to change the background or the back color property from this red color to white. So now that we have that, we have our interface set up and now let's just start working on the back end. So the first thing I want you guys to do is just double click on the button and that will automatically add this method um, to the backend. So we're gonna need one of these um, to do stuff when the user clicks on the button. 
then go back to your form and then click on the slider and double click and that's going to add the slider scroll method. What the slider scroll method is going to do is anytime the user goes into the app and changes the value on the slider, it's going to activate this method and do stuff inside of this method. So we're going to need that. We're going to need the copy uh, password button click one. And that should be what we need as like some basic methods here. One more thing we need to do to the interface is go ahead and click on this password length label. And we're going to just rename it from label one to password length label that way we have everything nicely named and we can remember what everything is so now that we're in our back end we need two basic things uh, to start with we're gonna need two variables one of them is going to be the password length so we need an actual value of the length of the password so we're going to initialize that as zero so we're going to say int current password length is equal to zero so the other thing we need is a random number generator uh, we, we need to be able to generate numbers between 1 and like 50-ish. And I'll explain what that means later. So to do that, we're going to say random. And here's where we name the object. I'm going to call this character equals new random. So that instantiates our random object, and we call the character. And I'll also explain why we call the character later. So another thing that we need to do is let's determine our minimum value and our maximum value for our slider on our form. So here's our slider. Um, it could be any range of numbers right now, but let's think about it. We want the smallest value or the smallest password length to be five. And let's just make the, the top password length uh, like 20. And honestly, it could be whatever you want, but I'm just gonna go with those values. So go back to your form one, and we wanna find our public form one method here. So what we wanna do here is say password length slider, because that's the name of our slider, dot minimum is equal to five and the password length slider dot maximum is equal to 20. So that will set the outside boundary values of this slider. So next we could start setting up our uh, slider scroll method. So anytime the user adjusts the slider, remember it's gonna call this method. So let's think about what we wanna do. When we are in this method, we want to go ahead and update the label. Remember the label that's telling the user how long the password is to the current value that they have selected. So it starts at five, but as they slide it, it wants, or I want it to be able to say like six or 10 or 20 or whatever they choose. What we're gonna do is go ahead and say password length label dot text is equal to, and then we want to reference our text that we already have. So password length colon space. And then here's the important part. We do a plus, and then we wanted to grab the current value of the slider. So we need to first reference a slider so we're going to say password length slider dot value and then dot to string because we need to convert it to a string since we're displaying it as a string. So then we want to uh, open close parenthesis that and then a semicolon. So that will go ahead and just update the um, current password length label so the user is always aware of what they have. And then we want to do one more thing. Remember the integer we had declared earlier up here, the current password length? We want to take that, go down here, paste it, and then say that is equal to the password length slider dot value. So the actual value that the slider is set to, we want to update the current password length every single time that the user is uh, moving that thing around. All right, guys, now before we launch our app, I realize I hit maybe a simple mistake. Um, go ahead and move this stuff underneath initialize component. Otherwise, your entire app will break. So just make sure to move that stuff down. So now that we have done that, let's go ahead and launch our app. So here we are, we have our app. Um, let's just make sure that as we adjust the slider, the value is updated correctly. So the default value is five because that's the bare minimum value that we have set. So if we bump this up to just a little bit, it goes to six and then seven and eight. And then if we move it up to like 20, that's all correct. So as we're moving this around, you see it constantly is changing and that's awesome. We have done that successfully. So the next thing we wanna do is go ahead and make our copy password button actually work. And a nice way to do that is uh, Visual Studio gave us a fun, handy way to do that simply. You just say clipboard dot set text. And then inside of these brackets, we wanna actually set our text of our clipboard. And if you haven't heard of the clipboard before, every time you copy something like control C or just copy, it actually is taking that and putting it into your clipboard. And uh, you can access and you can see all the stuff in your clipboard currently if you hold Windows key and V. 
uh, mine is empty, but that will show you all the stuff that you have previously copied, and it's a really handy tool. So now that we are aware of what the clipboard is, um, let's go ahead and actually set the text of it. So every time we click this button, what do we want to do? We want to take the password that we're going to display here and then set that or copy it into our clipboard. So let's go back to our form and we're just going to reference that label. So password label dot text. So that will easily just insert it into our clipboard. And you could see that if you launch the app, click copy password. Now you'll notice label one is inside of my clipboard. So we know that that is working. Okay, so now for the juicy fun part, we actually get to generate our password. Um, and what we're gonna do for that is we're going to generate or, or just write a method to handle that for us. So underneath this random object, what we want to do is say private void, actually no, we're gonna do private string password generator and then we're going to pass in one value and that's going to be the length of the password so we're going to say int password length and then let's open up these brackets here so every time that we call this method we want to uh, pass in the current password and then randomly generate a string and return it so the first thing we need to do is let's think of all the random characters that we want to put inside of password. What makes up a safe password? You know, we're gonna have a various combination of capital letters, lowercase letters, um, numbers, and symbols, right? That make, and as long as those are randomized, you have an extremely uh, safe password that's very hard to crack. So what we wanna do is just list out all the characters that we wanna use. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say string and then say, uh, all characters and then put that equal to the entire capital alphabet so a b c d e f g and i'm just going to fast forward through this part and then we want all of the numbers that are possible so 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and then we want the entire lowercase alphabet okay so now we have our entire lowercase alphabet in there let's uh take some symbols and throw those in there as well so at the end here let's just have some random crap like that so now that we have all these numbers, capital or case letters, and symbols in here, um, I think we have a fair, fairly sized pool to choose from. So next thing we wanna do is go ahead and declare our uh, password string. So we're just gonna say string random password. And this is going to be what we actually fill up with our random characters. So let's think about this. The method is being called, we are passing in a length of a password. Let's just say an arbitrary number of I don't know. The user selected eight. They want an eight character long password. How are we going to construct that to return that type of thing? Uh, what we want to do is have a loop, right? So every time um, we're going to loop from zero all the way up to the boundary of what the user said. And every time that we're in that loop, we want to add a random character into that string and then return the string. So an easy way to do that is just add a for loop down here. And we're going to say int i is equal to zero. i is going to be less than the password length that they had uh, passed in for us. And then every time that the loop completes, we're going to increment i by one. All right, so what do we want to do with inside this loop? Every time that the loop iterates, we want to generate some random number um, that corresponds to an index inside of our string. So uh, if you remember from earlier, we have this random object called character, and I call it character because we want to pull a random character, right, out of that string and into the variable that we're about to declare. We first need to generate a random number. And we're going to say int random num is equal to uh, character, which is our random object. And we're going to access the dot next method, which is going to generate the random number for us. However, there's a catch. We actually need to say the range of numbers that we want to generate. So we're going to start at zero because zero is the first index of our string. And then the upper boundary is going to be the length of the string. So we can just say all characters dot length and all characters dot length is going to work is because this second boundary is not inclusive while the first one is. So the first one's going to include zero and the second one isn't going to include the last index. And the last index is going to be the dot length. And if you know anything about using dot length is if you actually try to say 
like let's say you have a string of 10 characters you run dot length on it it's going to say like 11 or something if you try to say string at index 11 it'll break however because this is not inclusive it's going to do anything less than that length so whatever the length of this is it's really going to say minus one and then that will make sure that all of our characters in here um, are referenceable and valid so here comes the easy and fun part um, the next thing we're going to do is reference our string we declared so random well not the object random password we're going to say plus equals then we're going to say all characters and then the random number that we have generated which is random num so what that's going to do is um, go inside all character string add our random number index and then add that into our random password string which is sick so now the last thing we want to do is now that we have our random password after this loop has completed we want to update the label so that the user can actually see the password that we made um, and the way to do that is we're going to just say password label dot text is equal to random password oops random password so now that that is done um, let's just do two more things and then our app should be fully complete we want to actually reference this method here and then make sure to pass things into it all right guys one quick design change before we keep moving on here instead of private string we're just going to say private void and the reason we're going to change it from void is because we're we don't really need to return anything all we're doing is setting the password label dot text and whatever that text is in that label if we click copy password with the button that will put it in our clipboard and that's how we get the password um, we, we're not actually using that real string anywhere else in the whole program so we don't need to return it because that's just wasting um, processing power right not a lot of it but something so go ahead and change that to void and then we're going to scroll down here and we need to reference our password generator method that we just wrote um, around our program so the first time we want to do it is inside of our form one method and we have just loaded the program we want a default password to display on the um, label so we want to def uh, pass in the default value of five and that will update the label inside of our method so we don't need to worry about that and then we're going to copy this and every time that the password uh, length slider is scrolled we want to update it with a new password so go ahead and uh, put that in here and then instead of five we're going to say current password length that way that method is being called every single time the user is moving that thing around and the most updated uh, value of our integer is being passed into it okay so now that that is done let's go ahead and launch our app and see how it works okay so we've launched our app you'll notice that we have a default password length of five which is sick now anytime that i move this slider here it should generate a new password with that length okay so as you see here as we're moving it around it keeps generating new passwords and these are pretty awesome right they're they're pretty safe looking and uh it just works which is awesome that's going to conclude the tutorial so thank you guys for watching um if you like this video please give it a thumbs up it's going to get it out to more people and just help me as a whole um if you like content like this please subscribe to my channel and thank you for watching and i will see you in the next one